Step into the realm of biblical humanities, where a harmonious blend of intellect, emotion, and spirituality resonates at the intersection of biblical teachings and the humanities. Greetings, I'm Jesse Lee, representing the Hubel Center located in South Korea. In today's discussion, we will delve into the synopsis of The Great Gatsby. In Chapter 1, Nick Carraway, a recent graduate from Yale in the bustling 1920s, finds himself immersed in the securities trade in New York City. However, he yearns for the familiarity of his hometown, prompting him to lease a modest abode in the West Egg neighborhood of Long Island, just east of the city's perimeter. His humble $80 a month apartment pales in comparison to the grandeur of neighboring mansions, notably the opulent dwelling of a mysterious figure known as Gatsby. One day, Nick receives an invitation to visit the lavish mansion of his distant cousin, Daisy, residing in East Egg on the opposite end of the island. Daisy's husband, Tom Buchanan, a former Yale acquaintance and football star, also inhabits this extravagant estate. Joining them is Jordan Baker, a female golfer hailing from Louisville, Daisy's childhood hometown. Amidst strained pleasantries, Tom's sudden departure for a phone call and Daisy's exit leave Nick with Jordan, who discloses Tom's extramarital affair. Despite Tom and Daisy's attempts to mask the truth, Nick departs the mansion, grappling with conflicting emotions. It's baffling to witness Daisy's apparent complacency amidst Tom's infidelity. Compounded by Tom's disproportionate ire towards a controversial book, The Rise of the Colored Empires. Upon returning home, Nick encounters his enigmatic neighbor, Gatsby, standing beneath the starlit sky. His gaze fixated on a distant green light, evoking a sense of longing and mystery. In Chapter 2, Tom escorts Nick to the abode of his mistress, Myrtle Wilson, wife to the proprietor of an auto repair shop, Mr. Wilson. Myrtle, entangled in a clandestine affair with Tom since their chance encounter on a train, departs under the guise of visiting her sister, Catherine only to rendezvous with Tom later at their apartment. Joined by Catherine and the McKees, a neighboring couple, they engage in conviviality. During the meeting, Catherine divulges Myrtle and Tom's mutual disdain for their spouses, with Myrtle lamenting her husband's perceived inadequacies. Amidst the revelry, Nick overhears Catherine's falsehood regarding Daisy's inability to remarry due to her supposed Catholicism. As midnight approaches, tensions escalate between Tom and Myrtle over the mention of Daisy's name, culminating in a violent altercation where Tom breaks Myrtle's nose. Nick departs the chaotic scene, seeking solace at McKee's home before retiring to the dim confines of Pennsylvania Station, awaiting the pre-dawn train. In Chapter 3, during that vibrant summer, Nick receives an invitation to Gatsby's extravagant mansion. The soirees hosted therein are nothing short of spectacular, with music resonating into the wee hours and guests flocking like moths to a flame. Motorboats lead water skiers, Rolls Royces grace the roads on weekends, caterers set up camp to cater to every whim, and an orchestra serenades the evening. The driveway is a parade of parked cars, while guests adorned in lavish attire captivate the eye. Amidst the throng of uninvited attendees, Nick stands as an exception, having received a formal invitation. Here, he encounters Jordan Baker, a familiar face unexpected in this setting, and they find solace in each other's company amidst the social world. Initially unaware of Gatsby's identity, Nick is besieged by rumors until a man resembling his own age reveals himself as Gatsby. Gatsby extends an invitation for a hydroplane test flight the next morning, which Nick eagerly accepts. Throughout the evening, Gatsby intermittently excuses himself to attend to calls, eventually seeking a private audience with Jordan. Later, Jordan hints at Gatsby's enigmatic allure and extends an invitation for Nick to further explore their acquaintance. Despite the allure of New York's bustling atmosphere, Nick grapples. With moments of loneliness, empathizing with the solitude of fellow office workers navigating the city streets. A chance encounter with Jordan reignites feelings of attraction, yet Nick prioritizes resolving his unresolved past relationship, deeming it a testament to his integrity. In Chapter 4, acting on Gatsby's suggestion, Nick ventures to New York City for lunch, where he encounters Mr. Wolfsheim, a notorious gambler. Gatsby, initially hesitant, expresses a desire to clarify the myriad assumptions surrounding him to Nick. 
However, instead of divulging himself, Gatsby opts for Jordan to provide insight later that afternoon. When Tom Buchanan unexpectedly appears at a crowded restaurant, Gatsby's demeanor falters, prompting a hasty departure. From Jordan, Nick learns of Gatsby's past romance with Daisy, dating back to their pre-war liaison in 1917. Daisy, a beloved figure in Louisville's social scene, had encountered Gatsby near her home. Despite their affection, Daisy's societal obligations led to her marriage to Tom Buchanan, a wealthy Chicagone. Though Daisy remained devoted, Gatsby's allure persisted, leading him to acquire a mansion in West Egg, tantalizingly close to Daisy's Long Island abode. Nick realizes that Gatsby's aspirations weren't directed towards distant stars, but towards Daisy herself. Unexpectedly, Jordan reveals Gatsby's plea for Nick to arrange a reunion with Daisy, a revelation that sets the stage for a fateful encounter. In Chapter 5, upon returning home that evening, Nick is greeted by the radiant glow emanating from Gatsby's illuminated mansion, casting a luminous spectacle across West Egg. Encountering Gatsby inspecting his abode, Nick pledges to arrange a meeting with Daisy the following day over tea. Despite Gatsby's entreaties for a spontaneous outing to Coney Island, a swim, or a chance to earn money, Nick declines, retiring for the night. The ensuing day at the office, Nick extends an invitation to Daisy, urging her to join him for tea sans Tom. As the appointed day dawns amidst torrential rain, Gatsby arrives ahead of schedule, followed by Daisy in the late afternoon. Awkward pleasantries give way to poignant silence, prompting Nick to tactfully leave them alone to reconnect. Their reunion after five years elicits tears from Daisy and radiant joy from Gatsby. Leading Daisy and Nick on a tour of his lavish mansion, Gatsby shares anecdotes of acquiring the residence and populating it with intriguing guests to stave off loneliness. From the opulent ground floor to Gatsby's modest chamber, where Daisy is touched up at the dressing table while Gatsby beams beside her, Emotions range from bewilderment to ineffable bliss, underscored by their undeniable affection. As Nick bids farewell amidst the strains of Mr. Clipspringer's piano, he observes a fleeting doubt cloud Gatsby's countenance, only to be swept away as he recommits to his preoccupation with Daisy. In Chapter 6, Gatsby reveals his humble origins to Nick, born James Gats to impoverished North Dakota farmers. He assumed the name Gatsby at 17, sensing a profound shift in his destiny. Initially eking out a living from clamming and salmon fishing, fate intervened when he encountered Dan Cody, a wealthy tycoon of Nevada silver mines and Yukon River claims. Cody, manipulated into a nomadic existence by Ella Kay's scheming, recognized Gatsby's intellect and ambition. Hiring him as a confidant and guardian against his own excesses, Gatsby became ensnared in the extravagant lifestyle of the frontier elite, embodying the recklessness of a bygone era. However, Cody's demise, compounded by Ella Kay's betrayal, stripped Gatsby of his inheritance, leaving him with invaluable lessons and the resilience of true character. When Gatsby and I unexpectedly cross paths one Sunday afternoon, the arrival of Tom Buchanan adds tension to the encounter. Awkward pleasantries are exchanged, but the discomfort is palpable, especially with Daisy present. Concerned for Daisy's welfare, Tom attends Gatsby's subsequent party the following Saturday, observing the revelry with a critical eye before departing. Unaware of Gatsby's true identity, Tom dismisses him as just another nouveau riche bootlegger, deriding the eclectic mix of guests at the party. Observing Daisy's enjoyment, Tom resolves to uncover Gatsby's background. Meanwhile, Gatsby grapples with Daisy's reluctance to embrace his proposal. His scheme involves Daisy telling Tom, I never loved you, thereby terminating their four-year marriage, returning to Louisville, and marrying him anew. Despite Nick's warnings against dwelling on the past, Gatsby remains steadfast in his belief that history can be rewritten. In Chapter 7, just as Nick's curiosity about Gatsby peaks, he receives a call from Gatsby himself. Nick and Gatsby then venture to Daisy's residence on one of the sweltering summer days. However, interruptions arise when Tom's mistress, Myrtle Wilson, calls, disrupting the delicate equilibrium. A public display of affection between Daisy and Gatsby ensues, further complicating matters. Following a tense meal, Tom, growing impatient with Daisy's agitation in the oppressive heat, suggests a retreat to New York City. 
Insisting on driving Gatsby's car with Daisy, Tom orchestrates a procession with Gatsby, Nick, and Jordan trailing behind. At the Plaza Hotel, tensions escalate as Tom and Gatsby clash over Daisy's affections. Gatsby adamantly contends that Daisy has never loved Tom in the past five years, while Tom vehemently disputes this assertion. Caught in the crossfire, Daisy vacillates between declarations of love and accusations of greed, ultimately confessing her conflicted emotions. Gatsby remains convinced of Daisy's imminent departure from Tom, but Tom counters with damning revelations about Gatsby's shady business dealings, punctuating the heated exchange. Daisy, distressed by the unfolding events, implores Tom to accompany her home, but he insists she depart with Gatsby in his car ahead of him. Tom then drives Nick and Jordan in his coupe back to Long Island. However, en route, they encounter a commotion outside Wilson's shop, where three or four cars and a crowd gather. Sensing trouble, Tom investigates and discovers Myrtle, his former mistress and Wilson's wife, fatally injured by a passing car. Tom confirms Wilson's suspicion that the yellow car involved is the same one he drove earlier that day, assuring him of his alibi. Returning home, Tom finds Daisy safe and sound. Declining Tom's dinner invitation, Nick ventures outside to hail a cab, where he encounters Gatsby. In their conversation, Nick learns that it was Gatsby's car that struck Myrtle, with Daisy at the wheel. Gatsby intends to confess his involvement and retreats to his home after ensuring Daisy's rest. In Chapter 8, the following day, Nick notices Gatsby's return home via taxi and pays him a visit. They share a cigarette, during which Gatsby recounts his love story with Daisy. Meeting her, the daughter of a millionaire, Gatsby becomes acutely aware of the gaping divide between their backgrounds. She resides in opulence, while he struggles as a young man of modest means. Nevertheless, Gatsby fabricates a facade of wealth and success to win her affections, ultimately succeeding. Initially intending to end the relationship due to his socioeconomic status, Gatsby finds himself deeply in love and unable to part ways especially when duty calls him to war. Despite his heroics on the battlefield, fate intervenes as the government sends him to Oxford, preventing a timely return to Daisy. She starts dating other men and eventually crosses paths with Tom, whom she eventually marries. The final correspondence Gatsby received from Daisy was while he was in Oxford. After Nick hears this tale, he realizes he's late for work and departs. Meanwhile, as Myrtle Wilson's body is prepared for burial, Wilson grapples with the mystery of her demise. Observing the events leading up to her death, Wilson suspects Myrtle recognized the driver of the yellow car, intending to confront them before tragedy struck. This revelation, unbeknownst to his assistant Michaelis, prompts Wilson to probe deeper. He recalls Myrtle's past injuries and infers a connection to her secret affair. Consumed by grief and suspicion, Wilson wanders aimlessly, eventually deducing the yellow car's owner. Armed with this knowledge, Wilson arrives at West Egg and, in a fit of rage and desperation, shoots Gatsby dead at his pool. In Chapter 9, two years later, Nick reflects on the aftermath of Gatsby's death. Police, photographers, and reporters swarm Gatsby's house incessantly, while the neighborhood children remain the only curious onlookers. Wilson's descent into madness is attributed to grief, swiftly closing the chapter on the murder investigation. Left to organize the funeral arrangements alone, Nick encounters reluctance from those who once frequented Gatsby's lavish parties. Attempts to contact Daisy and Gatsby's business associate, Wolfsheim, yield no success. Fueled by a growing sense of defiance, Nick stands in solidarity with Gatsby against the indifference of society. On the third day, Gatsby's father, residing in Minnesota, announces his intention to attend the funeral, scheduled for the following day upon his arrival. On the day of the funeral, Clipspringer, dubbed The Border, places a call to Gatsby's house. Upon Nick's invitation to join the funeral, Clipspringer declines the invitation, citing a prior picnic engagement. Instead, he requests his tennis shoes, indifferent to the gravity of the situation. Nick's journey to confront Mr. Wolfsheim in New York City proves fruitless, as Wolfsheim refuses involvement, adhering to his principle of posthumous detachment. At the appointed time, the Lutheran pastor arrives for the funeral, but no mourners materialize. Amidst the eerie silence, Gatsby's father, the minister, 
Nick, and a solitary mourner, the bespectacled man from Gatsby's study, accompanied by servants, attend the sparsely attended ceremony. Expressing disbelief at the absence of mourners, the man remarks on the stark contrast to Gatsby's once bustling gatherings. Concluding with a somber lament for the deceased, Nick reminisces about the bittersweet sensation of returning to the Midwest after spending each Christmas season in the East during his college years. It was a ritual that reaffirmed his sense of belonging. Reflecting now, he acknowledges that theirs is ultimately a tale of the West. Tom, Gatsby, Daisy, Jordan, and himself, all Westerners, share some deficiency in common that renders them subtly incompatible with Eastern life. Despite recognizing the allure and grandeur of the East, it has always held a twisted allure. Following Gatsby's demise, the East appears irreparably warped to Nick's eyes, prompting his decision to retreat homeward. Before departing, Nick resolves not to simply let the indifferent sea wash away his troubles. He confronts Jordan Baker to clarify their relationship. However, without addressing Nick's concerns, she abruptly reveals that she is engaged to another man and implies that Nick was the one who turned her down. She admits to misjudging his character, believing him to be honest and upright. Nick, realizing he's too old to deceive himself, ends their relationship, citing his age as a barrier to self-deception. In October, Nick encounters Tom on Fifth Avenue. Refusing Tom's proffered handshake, Nick demands to know what transpired with Wilson that fateful afternoon. Tom recounts how he divulged Gatsby's identity to Wilson, who, armed with a gun, sought answers about the car's owner. Tom unleashes a barrage of condemnation on Gatsby for his recklessness and infidelity towards both Nick and Daisy. Nick is left speechless, unable to refute the accusations. This moment prompts Nick to recognize once more the true nature of Tom and Daisy, they were careless people. Feeling foolish, Nick begrudgingly shakes Tom's hand before parting ways. Thank you for participating in our exploration of the synopsis of The Great Gatsby. I hope this review of the classic novel has provided you with valuable insights. I look forward to our next discussion.